Yeah, these kind of old cemeteries fascinate me. Photographing historic sites, historic buildings, and then uh, cemeteries like this is, is kind of an important thing to do. Obviously, if it's respectful, if anything, just for the history of the space. So we're not just, you know, photographing the mundane and the, and the unusual, but, you know, we're also giving some attention to the, the people who really built the area that you live. Established during the early part of the gold rush, 1860s, there are an estimated 3,000 people buried in the Idaho City Pioneer Cemetery. Fewer than 300 of these historic graves are identified. Of the identified graves, only 28 individuals died of natural causes. A lot of history here. Um, I'm not quite sure where I am now. I found a path that's wider than the rest of the paths. I see rooftops over there. And I hear a rooster, so maybe I wandered way off trail. But I did find a headstone that I want to photograph. It's like way buried deep in the woods. So I'm gonna wander back over there. There's the van. I found it. Okay, we're good, we're safe. So I'm currently loading in uh, Ilford FP4. Black and white, obviously. Um, my entire goal is to shoot historic context like this. Oh, and there we go. Oh man, my hands are sweaty. <laughs> so my whole plan is to shoot one exposure, take one exposure out here um, of one of the grave sites of one of the, uh, the headstones. I found one that I think is exactly what I was hoping for. From there, take my 4x5 and go into town and do the rest of the exposures down there. There's an old courthouse, there's an old jailhouse, uh, there's an old like uh, sawmill type thing. There's just a lot of historic stuff there. So my hope is to get kind of a a triptych of Idaho City and 4x5. And uh, yeah, all these historic sites. I have one extra just in case I know I, I messed something up. So that's why I loaded four and not three. Okay, so this is the headstone of Margaret Ellen Buckley. She was 76 years old when she passed away in 1901. I love the placement. I love the big tree. I love the carving on the headstone. And this is the subject for my first photo in the triptych. Uh, when I passed here earlier, the light was hitting the, the, the headstone in a much nicer way. Um, <clears throat> I think it's only going to get worse as the sun is setting. So. Uh, yeah, it's almost entirely in shadow now, which I guess will work pretty well for black and white. What I'll usually do is I'll use uh, an app called Viewfinder. I have it set for um, my 4x5 at 180 millimeters, which is my only lens, and FP4. So it gives me an idea of uh, how the framing would look and where I should set up. Yeah, so something like right here is what I'm hoping for, what I'm kind of envisioning.
So this is my Chamonix 4x5. Uh, I think it's an F2 model. Um, I love it. I've been shooting with it now for a number of months. Haven't done any video content with it because I wanted to get pretty confident with how, how it manages and how it works. Um, and after developing, I think probably a dozen sheets, um, finally ready to make a video with it. Uh, just operation-wise, quality-wise, it's superb. And uh, I, I just love shooting with it. Highly recommended uh, if you're looking for a new 4x5 uh, rather than buying a used one. If you're looking for extra savings, uh, there's no reason to buy a really nice uh, dark cloth. This is the one I've been using. Some sewn together t-shirts. Picked out of a thrift store. Let me just do this like a cloak. Okay, so if you're looking for an actual large format like full tutorial, this is not the video for you. This is a photography on location video. There are a lot better large format uh, tutorials out there. I will just tell you what I tend to do after, you know, quite a bit of time out there taking pictures. So I start off leveling my camera. I've made sure that everything forward and back is level. I like the, the basic composition. Now I'm going to fine tune it using my actual uh, standard movements. So up, down, left, right, swings and tilts. I'm going to mess with it until I'm fine tuned and exactly what I want to do. I have to be quick though because the light is not on my side necessarily um, and I want to make sure that I have plenty of, uh, of sunlight. I honestly have no idea if you're going to be able to see this. Now that I've done that, I can actually start metering the scene. Um, this is a Pentax digital spot meter. Several of you have asked in the comments already. So it's Pentax digital spot meter. It's my favorite spot meter. It's what I learned on. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at 125 in the ISO. Okay, so I'm going to go 5.6 at 1 60th. Should be just right. And now that I'm metered up, I'm locked down, everything's exactly what it needs to be. What I like to do is attach my cable release and close my shutter. And now I'm ready to actually grab my film. <clears throat> Give a little tug. Closed. Okay. It's at 5.6. 1 60th. Now, only now, do I cock the shutter Pull the dark slide. Try to shade it slightly. And there it was. And this is exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly pack up and then do the other part of my triptych which is to have a sub-triptych in each location. So I brought my Polaroid camera. Um, wait, let me pack this up and I'll explain. Okay, so what I'm envisioning is having, in each of the three locations, having one 4x5 large format photo of each spot, and then two Polaroid images for each one. So six photos from the Polaroid, three photos from the large format. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's very hot and dry out here. So I brought my i2 and a new pack of color film. We're gonna load it up and just do a little walk around um, in, the, in this uh, Pioneer Cemetery and just take a couple more shots. Try to get something nice for, for the triptych that I'm envisioning. We photographers are weird.
I'm not gonna film this with this camera. It's just too cumbersome. So I'll probably just wander around with the Polaroid, show the pictures at the end. And there they are, two Polaroids. Exactly what I was hoping for. We've got one of the kind of infant crib gravesite and then one of an unmarked grave. I think between the three, the triptych that I'm thinking for this particular spot, um, they're working perfectly. They even have like a, um, a similar tone to them in that they are not like perfectly colored. They are very muted. Exactly what I was hoping for. I think combined with the black and white, it's gonna look really cool. At least I hope it will. You'll know before I do though, because you know, obviously I'm showing you this video. Oh wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let's go into town. So I've consulted the visitor's map and I think I'm going to go to the old church the old Catholic Church and the penitentiary. I think those three together make a lot of sense uh, with uh, the Pioneer Cemetery as far as a theme goes, if you catch my drift. So while the light is hitting it really well, I'm gonna grab my Polaroid. I'm gonna take a shot of the bell tower and a shot of the, uh, probably one of the stained glass windows. And that's how I'll start uh, this particular uh, photo session and then I'll switch over to large format go down the hill take a picture of that So for this one, I did something similar to this if I move just slightly over You can see how the Sun just peeks out just ever so slightly. So that's what I was trying to do with this shot We'll see how it turns out. Okay, this shot stained glass Jesus I've got it set to f16 at 1 two hundredths. nice white wall easy easy. This is fun. So the real benefit of shooting Polaroid like this is, um, yeah, it just kind of speeds up the process. It kind of gets the creative juices flowing. And then when you're ready to pull out that big camera, you've already had some time to kind of think about the composition and what you want to capture as you're out there. So now I know I want to go down the hill, just kind of walk down there slightly and shoot up towards the church. <laughs> Probably really hard to see this with my phone, but it's kind of what we're looking at right now. Okay. This is, yeah. This is a fun setup, as you can see. Because I'm at the base of a hill, my, my camera is level. I'm having to put pretty much all the rise I can, which is gonna create a little bit of a vignette at the top. Not too concerned because the sky is nice and bright. What I am concerned with is that the entire church face is in focus. 15, one. Let's open it up. F8 at 1, 1 25th. Just open it up. Three, two, go. Two down, one to go. Ooh, my camera's overheated. All right, I'll catch up with you at the jailhouse. My camera's overheated, so it's going to die any second now. Okay, slight change of plans. In my rear view mirror, you should be able to see there are a couple cars parked directly in front of the old jailhouse. Nixing that plan. I don't like those modern cars in front, but This house that I'm across from is another historical building right here 
um, cool green, cool shadows, cool green doors, plaques, the whole nine. I think this is my new subject. I love the brick building. I love the rusty roof. Obviously it won't show up in black and white, but beggars can't be choosers. We're going to photograph this one and uh, kind of just do a little walk around the perimeter with my Polaroid first. Found my first subject. Easy. Where the winter chrysanthemums go, there's nothing to write about but the radishes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a picture of that with my Polaroid. Hey, it's me. Hey. And there they are. The last two. Oh. Chinese Legacy in Boise Basin. This is the Pon Yam store. This is another historic building. Being that it's an important historic building to really the settlement of Idaho in general, um, I think it's totally fits in the theme of my cryptic. Tri cryptic? Triptic. <laughs> cryptic. Um, a lot of people don't realize just how much, like, um, Chinese roots there are in, uh, in Idaho. It wasn't a very good time during the pioneer time for, uh, the Chinese, but my channel is a photography channel, not a political one. Without my wider lens, I just can't get the full frame. I have to uh, adapt. It could very easily become the most awkward of my photo shoots as far as running two cameras, trying to get set up on a busy corner. Lots of uh, Okay, we're gonna go F16 at 1 15th of a second. <clears throat> Three, two, one. I know I'm kind of breaking the rule of my triptych, but I have one more shot. And instead of taking the same one, I really like this window. Good grief. We are ready to go. And three, two, one. All right, and that's uh, that's it for the on location portion of this video. I'll meet you back at my desk so we can talk about the arrangement of the triptych. Not cryptic, triptych. <laughs> What I read is it's not too uncommon to actually experience your Polaroids yellowing after they've been exposed to pretty extreme heats. Uh, and it was pretty warm out there, and my van doesn't have AC, and since they were sitting in there, I tried to move them into a cooler, but I think because they were sitting in the camera, sitting in my van, out taking pictures with it, they turned yellow. Now I tried to correct that when I scanned them in, but it kind of throws off the actual look of them in person, which is, you know, the whole point of the triptych is I'm going to take my film, enlarge it, and then put it into place with the, the Polaroids, the physical Polaroids, not like scans of the Polaroids. But that's just a minor complaint. They still turned out pretty cool, and I think it gets my point across. You can see I had to take uh, the church photos twice because the first time 
totally overexposed. I don't know how that happened. I think it's the heat, but then I'm left with these six. What you should notice right off the bat is as I took the Polaroids, I was kind of thinking about angles and directions. So you see both of these frames, they point inward. Both of these frames point inward and both of these frames point inward. So I can either arrange them in this way or flip them around and have them point outward away from the central photo. Still debating on that. All right, our very first frame right here. Nicely in focus. It's gonna go along with these two, similar to that. The reason I feel like this composition is especially powerful is that each of these frames, you can see they've got the wooden, um, yeah, the wooden frames connecting all three of them. Now, while I do like how this is arranged, um, it's not as powerful as the uh, as the, the cemetery, I think this image throws it off. This one works, but maybe if I did another one of a stained glass window, uh, it would have worked a little better. Or if I was able to get up and actually take a picture of the bell in the bell tower, I think that would have worked better. It still fits. They're all very like, oh, they're all very connected. It's just this one might be too similar. We shall see. And in this final image of the triptych, this one I think um, is one of my favorites just because it, uh, it's just so unique. You've got these two, which are very, very strong Chinese, you know, kind of that Asian influence and the very rustic, I don't know, pioneer style brick building. They don't connect super well when you think about it. But when you see the name of the building, when you see some of the symbolism, um, it all just kind of ties it together nicely. And I think these two pointing towards it, they work nicely together. And these two might be the best of the, the Polaroids, in my opinion, as far as how they colored. They did turn a little yellow, but not nearly as bad uh, as the other ones. And this, there are the three original four by five triptych images of Idaho City. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this little assignment turned out. Um, I would have liked to been able to take a picture of the jailhouse instead of this building, this Chinese building. Um, not the end of the world. It still works and I, I, I got this image out of it, which I'm a big fan of how this one turned out just the shadows and the lights, that whole little, um, I don't know what it's even called, this little window seat just turned out so nice in my opinion. I've heard it said that it's difficult to find purpose in your photography if you aren't given an assignment. And for those of us like myself who aren't being given assignments, we have to give ourselves assignment. And that's really what this experiment was about, this triptych. So for me, to give myself this assignment of going out to Idaho City, exploring, finding buildings and structures and areas that speak to me specifically, and then capturing them in such a way that they are connected to each other. Um, it was such a good experience and so helpful um, as I pursue more of this photography. I like to give myself little assignments like this. Uh, if nothing else than to feel like my photos have a purpose, that they don't just exist in a vacuum of art. Uh, too often we get so focused in on social media, on YouTube, that we forget that photography exists for a reason. And our art has to have a purpose, or doesn't have to have a purpose, but it's nice to give it a purpose so that as you're out there working at it, uh, you have a reason to pursue. And for me specifically, uh, while you know none of these images are like my favorites I've ever taken of all time, uh, the whole process has been a really rewarding one, uh, and I hope to do more like it in the future.
I hope you enjoyed this this piece. I know it was a bit long, but you know, I wanted to tell the entire story, not break it up into multiple pieces. As always, thank you so much for the support. If you enjoyed this content, give it a like or a thumbs up. Uh, it helps the channel grow, honestly. And uh, because I'm trying to get out there a couple times a week to, to film and photograph, that would really indicate to me that you're appreciating what I'm putting out there. So that's all I got for you. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.